everyone. Whoop. Covered up the screen there. All right. Hello. Let's go ahead and get Dr. Laura on here. Hello, Erin. Hello, hello. Laura. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, so nice to see you. So nice to be here. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. You are like such a happy, good energy. Thank you for being on this week. Oh my gosh. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's so much fun. I'm going to go a fun tribe. Just turn my volume up a little bit. There we go. Yes. So, oh, I can help tell my boyfriend's coming home because my dogs are just going crazy. <laughs> so, so excuse fun. the noise in the background. <laughs> So they good. always freak out when he comes home. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I wanted to just say an extra special thanks. I know um, with everything that's been going on with, um, I know here in Minnesota, George Floyd, all of that stuff, um, I just think it's it was such a testament to you to be able to come on and hold that space. Um, and I really, really appreciate it. And I want to say a shout out to anyone who's being affected um, by anything that's going on. I know both you and I really feel for everyone. So thank you for taking the time to be here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yes. So just to give, I just did a little research um, about you before coming on. So just so everyone knows, Dr. Laura Ritchie is a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic health, a national board certified health and wellness coach, a certified women's health and functional nutritionist coach, coach a certified insulin resistance coach, an essential oil educator and global leader with doTERRA international. So that is amazing. And I'm really interested what pulled you into the essential oil field, because I have to say, I like really loved so many of the tips that you were sharing with us. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's an interesting story. So a couple years into practice as a physical therapist, I actually got a really rare cancerous tumor mm. called a desmoid tumor in my abdominal wall, the size of a softball. And I went through this healing journey related mm -hmm. to that four surgeries and the last of which they did a complete reconstruction mm -hmm. of my abdominal wall. And during that time they had said, I don't think he can work for a year. You can't lift anything over five pounds. You, we don't want this hernia to herniate again. And I remember feeling like a burned out, stressed out healthcare professional that I went into this work of being a PT to help and serve other people. And when I really look back, I think that that was maybe a piece, not all of yeah. it, but the red tape and the insurance mm -hmm. hoops that we're having to jump through and mm -hmm. all of the paperwork and just all of those things. And what is interesting is during that space, I went through kind of a crisis of who am I if I'm not a physical therapist? Ah, like I spent so much yes. time, went to school for seven years, <laughs> like yes. all these things. And I kind of went on a journey to heal myself yes. and my body from, from cancer, from all of the things and started to look into functional nutrition, started looking into holistic remedies because MD Anderson told me that I had a 50% recurrence rate and that's not great. <laughs> Right. You're like, um, okay. I was like, I was like flipping a coin. I think I'm going right. to look into some other things. And one of my trusted friends, she's a registered nurse. She taught a class on oils for pain mm -hmm. and pain is a very motivating factor. Yes. And I was super skeptical. I have to say that <laughs> because mm -hmm. as a healthcare professional and we're taught that everything needs to be evidence-based and research-based. And I thought, okay, I, this seems kind of really hokey. I don't know right. if this is for me, but I went and honestly, I got started with two oils almost to kind of prove like, well, yeah. I'll show you, I'll try this and I'll just like cross it off my list and move on. And they worked. 
and I started getting consistent results and was kind of blown away. And then because this is the type of person that I am, I started getting on PubMed and doing more research about them and was like, wow, there's actually thousands of research articles that validate the use of essential oils. And I thought, gosh, in PT, we have so many patients on opioids, narcotics, and they're dealing with side effects. And if there's something that is safe, that mm-hmm. is effective that we can use. Why aren't we talking about this? And I actually started a virtual health coaching practice during that time. And while I was healing and my patients were coming to me saying, I'm really struggling with sleep, but I don't yeah. want to go on a prescription medication. What do you got for me? Right. Or, you know, I really struggle with headaches or this or that. And I was like, here, try this essential oil. Like, let's add this in while we're working on the underlying root cause of, right. you know, your digestive issues or whatever may be going on. And they were having great success with it. And mm-hmm. it kind of started to grow to where wow. now I do doTERRA and sell essential oils and educate about essential oils full time mm-hmm. and kind of work with just a very small number of private health coaching clients. Right. With that. And it's cool because I've been able to incorporate a little bit of everything, kind of the pelvic floor PT and the functional nutrition and the oils. So when like people get started with the oils, we kind of pull all that. Yeah. In, which is neat. That's awesome. Yeah. So I love hearing um, how people get to different professions because I know when I went to school, it was sort of like, okay, you go to college or whatever, and what are you going to be? It's like lawyer or doctor. And then I got to college and there was other options, but still then when I got into the healthcare profession as a PT, I got started to get burnt out and, um, I'm like, you know, okay, this, I, they told me to go to PT school and I love working with patients, but no one told me how to work in like corporate America (laughs) and like deal with all of that stuff. And, um, and it felt like I wasn't helping people as much. And so I love hearing that you can go in and get a degree. But then I loved when I was going through and you're like, I'm certified in this, and I'm certified in this, and I'm certified in this. And I think that's so cool, because you can constantly sort of um, reinvent yourself. But then also for um, my, uh, my platform of people, it's nice because they can get in contact with you if they are struggling with these things. So they have another resource to really kind of explore. So like one of the questions that came in, I know some of these are like, can be very specific, but, um, like one individual asked if there were remedies or routines to help with people who have insomnia, which I kind of felt was really pertinent with what's going on right now. I mean, I had heard so much insomnia um, because of the pandemic, because people were at home. So their like weekday weekend was not the same. And their morning wake time and nighttime sleep time wasn't the same. And then now the stress of things. So I thought that that might be a good one. And I know your takeover, you shared some very awesome things. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. interesting because sleep is one of my favorite topics to talk about. So it honestly just depends on how deep we want to go down that route. Mm-hmm. So from an essential oil perspective, I can share some oils and some yes. tips, and then I can share some lifestyle things I love that, it. that we need to change because I was one of those people that had really bad insomnia. So mm-hmm. I understand and I sympathize with whoever asked this question because Oh, sleep affects everything. And when we're not getting good restful sleep, then we're having more fatigue during the day. It throws off our cortisol cycles, circadian cycles, hormones. Uh, It can increase your pain if you're not getting good sleep. So Mm -hmm. it's really critical. Yeah. Essential oils to help with sleep. There's a couple. We know lavender. And usually most people will, that's a go-to. Lavender is kind of the gateway oil for a lot of Mm -hmm. people to sleep. But there's also some oils like Roman chamomile, or mm-hmm. cedarwood or vetiver. Vetiver is kind of a natural tranquilizer, if you will, that can kind mm-hmm. of work. Or there's a blend that doTERRA has called Serenity, mm-hmm. which I think of as lavender on steroid ah, <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's got the lavender, but it's got some of those grounding oils like hoe wood and cedarwood mm-hmm. and vetiver. So usually if somebody's really struggling, I'd be like, let's start with a blend because there's yes. a lot of oils in there that are going to help. And that could be putting the oil on the bottoms of your feet before bed, Mm -hmm. diffusing it before bed, putting a couple drops in your pillow. And then serenity essential oil, you don't want to take internally, but there's a 
soft gel called Serenity Soft Gels Mm -hmm. that's designed to take it's got lavender and L-theanine and amino acid to be really calming. So it's recommended to take one to two soft gels before Mm -hmm. bed. For me, three Mm -hmm. was the magical number number that worked. The stars Mm aligned. Yeah. (laughs) So it's bio individualized, right? Mm -hmm. You got to listen to your body with that. But for me, I needed all three. I needed aromatic. I needed Mm -hmm. topical. I needed internal. Mm -hmm. I do really well with a detox bath before bed. Mm -hmm. Y'all saw me take one of those. Yeah. How often do you do those? Do you do like detox baths? I will try to do at least three times a week. Okay. If I have the time and space for it more. Yeah. Yeah. It's become a ritual and just a way to kind of detox and I'll read my favorite book and I'll nice. just kind of sit and it's a way for me to calm yeah. and ease into nighttime. Yeah. So that's a good tip, but I will say mm-hmm. prepping for sleep starts in the morning. It starts when you wake up. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I love this. So, I love this. Start. I was just writing yeah. a blog post that prepping for sex starts like hours and hours before and so the fact that like when you said that prepping for sleep and then you said starts in the morning I was like oh my god I feel like I just wrote this so yes yes, yes. tell me about this we're like on the same wavelength yes so when you wake up in the morning and this is can be challenging for people because usually insomniacs they're staying up way too late and their circadian rhythms all thrown off and they're sleeping in and it's it's complicated but if you can okay so what I'm going to tell you is simple, but not always easy to do. These are the lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. And yes, essential oils can be a tool, but I'm very big into like, let's reset your circadian rhythms. Let's look at this. So when you first wake up in the morning, ideally we want to get up when the sun comes up. So Mm -hmm. researching when does the sun rise in your area, Mm -hmm. set your alarm clock for then. And if you can, within about 15 minutes of waking up, go outside Mm -hmm. And look in the direction of the sun, not right at it, but in right. the general direction, get some sunlight. So, you know, drink your warm lemon water, put a little yeah. bit of lemon essential oil in your warm water, prime your digestion, go outside, do your personal development, do your reading, do your meditation, do your devotionals or whatever mm-hmm. that looks like. Gratitude practice. Bonus points. If you can actually go outside and move, if you're walking, okay. cause then you're getting some exercise with this. So what that does is it tells the pineal gland, Hey, it's daytime, stop making melatonin, Mm -hmm. like you need to wake up, like, oh, okay, it's daytime. So I will tell you the first couple days to maybe a week into this, you're going to feel super sick. You're not going to like it. It's going to be hard to wake up early. It's going to be challenging to go outside like your body. It's going to be an adjustment period, Mm -hmm. maybe a little bit uncomfortable. And this is where use your peppermint essential oil, peppermint (laughs) and wild orange, put on the back of your neck, that energizing tip, smell that for focus, (laughs) diffuse that. Now we want to avoid caffeine after noon and <laughs> sugar <laughs> after mm. noon because that can be keeping you up mm-hmm. and can stimulate things. Sometimes even B vitamins for people can be really stimulating. Uh-huh. So I'll ask people like, are you taking multivitamin? When are you taking that? Okay. Um, like for me, the cutoff's 2 p.m. If I take that, right. if I forget to take my supplement, I take it later, I'm going to be up at night. So okay. listen and honor your mm-hmm. body with that. There's a lot of research that meditation, even mm-hmm. 10 minute meditation will help you have better well, sleep. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter when in the day you get that done, if it's morning, afternoon, right before bed. So add in some meditation. Mm-hmm. Those that exercise get better sleep. So mm-hmm. moving your body. That's why I love to combine the morning light with that. But if you can't mm-hmm. do that in the morning, fit that in when you can. That's really important. Eating dinner a little bit earlier so that mm-hmm. you have about three hours of not eating before bed. Cause you don't want to be eating a heavy meal and then try to go to bed. Your body's trying to digest and process all of that. Right. And then we do this with kids, but we don't do this with us having a bedtime routine mm. with children. It's like they have dinner and then we're like, okay, let's go take a bath and let's read a book and let's do all the things. And with adults, we're like on our smartphone or whatever. And then we're like turning it off and trying to go to bed and it just doesn't work. Right. So, Ideally, turning off electronics, Mm -hmm. doing my mentor, Dr. Jessica Drummond with the Integrated Women's Health Institute, she talks about laptop curfew Mm -hmm. of eight o'clock, like turn the things off. Mm -hmm. And as the sun goes down, we need to be turning off all of our things and Mm -hmm. creating a darker environment. If you have to be on electronics, wear those amber light blocking glasses Mm -hmm. and the blue light blocking glasses and start to get off of the electronics 
to mm. read an actual book book. Um, and this is where I like to diffuse calming oils throughout the home mm -hmm. and like start to set the mood, turn down the lights. Okay. Let's yeah. turn off the electronics. Um, I'll take a little bit of like bedtime tea with lavender. I'll sell my, my mm -hmm. bedtime tea yeah. or magnesium. Mm -hmm. I'll take two serenity soft gels because a lot of people, I would argue even now with all of the stress going on in the world, mm -hmm. we have some adrenal insufficiency mm -hmm. and it's almost like they're tired, but wired yeah. and like maybe 9 PM is that cutoff and they're tired, but then they're like, Oh, I have this small burst of energy. So let me like answer all my emails or <laughs> let me yes. go and do a bajillion things. Yeah. And so we want to catch it before that happens. So right. We want to be using the essential oils before we're going to be taking the supplements or the magnesium mm -hmm. or whatever that is before getting into the bath so that you can start to adjust and help the body kind of ease into that. Like mm -hmm. before bed is not a time to do your taxes. It's not a time right. to do really analytical stuff or watch a, watch a horror movie Stressful. or read a yes. thriller Stressful. book or yes. Yes. calm, calm, um, all the things. And then like starting to get into bed and maybe you read, maybe do your meditation practice. Mm -hmm. um, I love heart math of mm -hmm. just um, like taking some deep breaths and coming, kind of tuning back into that inner wisdom mm -hmm. and that intuition and getting quiet. But we can use essential oils as a tool with that. So it's mm -hmm. like this whole process of right. going through that in the day to get to that point and, you know, making sure all electronics are turned off. Um, for some people, Wi-Fi can really bother them. So we have a timer on our Wi-Fi that it goes off when we go to bed and then it mm -hmm. doesn't come back on until we get up. Take your phone out of your bedroom. Like we, right. we don't need that in there. Right. Um, like yeah, the bed should just be for like sex and sleep. Like, right. And I think it's so interesting that the essential oils are almost like this vehicle or this cue to kind of like you were saying with the, the orange or, you know, that that's like, Hey, it's, it's awake time. Just like using the light is like, okay, it's awake time. And, you know, just these different tools and tips to start to trigger things of, okay, now it's time to do this. Now it's time to do this. Now it's time to do this to really help drive it home. Because I definitely had that Last night I was like, okay, I'm really tired. I'm really tired. But then I was like kind of irritated at my boyfriend. So I thought, okay, kind of feeling irritated. Maybe I should go rest. And then I was like, I'm going to repot a plant. <laughs> and so I literally like repotted like four plants and I woke up tired this morning and I was like, and he, when he came back over to visit, he's like, why is there so much dirt in our kitchen sink? And I'm like, because I was repotting a plant. <laughs> He's like, why? And I'm like, just get my hands in the dirt, you know? And so, yeah, so I can see where essential oils, because I had done essential oils all day, uh, I treat out of my home. And so I'll do that to like set the stage for patients to come over. And it was funny mm -hmm. when I finally opened my home office and I set the stage for patients to come over. I'm like, God, my home is so much nicer and more enjoyable. And then I was like, why am I waiting for patients? Why did I need that to do this for patients as opposed to doing it for me? So I, I just mm -hmm. love that, you know, that idea of like, hey, we can create this space for ourselves. It's such a powerful act of self-care mm -hmm. and you can anchor it in with things and like just taking a moment and just, it's a reminder to slow down and take deep breaths and come back to yourself, come back to the breathing, come back to the present moment. Right. Yeah. Right now. Um, so this is something that's come up, um, uh, for another person that we talked to and we didn't get a chance to talk to talk. I didn't get a chance to ask this individual about it. Um, but, uh, essential oils for people who struggle with hypothyroidism. Mm. So, um, I know they, they had just written in a question about that. And I remember getting it last time and I didn't get to it. So I'm like, Oh, I'll ask this time. It's a so, good one. There's a couple so mm -hmm. I like frankincense. I mm -hmm. like a blend. Actually, it's frankincense, lemongrass, myrrh, mm -hmm. and lavender. And you can do peppermint too. And just mm -hmm. put it right over the thyroid. Now, what's interesting about hypothyroidism, and, and there's, yes, oils. And mm -hmm. take out the gluten, dairy, sugar yes. from your diet. Start focusing on your sleep and mm -hmm. your movement and hydration. And like all of these, these key foundational mm -hmm. pillars. But second chakra, throat chakra, 
And what I notice with hypothyroidism or autoimmune is there's usually this feeling like you can't speak your truth Mm. and, or that you're going to be judged by that, or that it's not safe to speak your truth or whatever Mm. that looks like. Um, A lot of my thyroid clients will, will mention that. So I'll use the oils for physical support, but Mm -hmm. also for emotional support. So lavender is the oil of communication. And so Mm. you can put that on, or if you know you have to have a discussion with somebody, maybe put some lavender on over the thyroid. Spearmint is the oil of confident speech. So if you're doing public speaking Mm -hmm. or something, you can put a little bit of that over your throat and be like, okay, or do a combination of both communication, public speaking. So I like to pull in. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So is that, um, are those emotional supports in that emotional healing book that you referenced on the takeover? So good because I came to oils for the physical support and they're awesome for that. But the emotional support, I'll yeah. hold it up if anybody wants to see Yes, I love it. We'll take the emotional support has become my favorite way to use oils. And this mm-hmm. is a book. It's a Kendall book, Essential Emotions. It. And it's also an app. Nice. And when somebody doesn't like the scent of an oil, because this happens a lot, it kind of blows my mind. They'll be like, oh my gosh, Laura, I can't stand this. Like lavender, for example. Oh yeah. my gosh, I can't stand this. Oh, lavender, uh. And I'm like, well, it might be bringing up an emotional component. Like, let's Mm. look up what it is in the book. And I will look it up for them and, like, maybe send them a screenshot. And I kid you not, I have had clients come up to me uh, in tears saying that was the one thing that I have been working on in my life. And it hit nail on the head. So you can take like a roller bottle and do maybe a drop or two of that oil Mm -hmm. that you can stand and fill the rest with your carrier oil, like with your coconut oil. Yeah. And just start rolling it on the bottoms of the feet Mm -hmm. once or twice a day, put socks and shoes on. So you don't even have to smell it and then come back and smell that oil in a week and it'll smell completely different. Wow. That is so fascinating. So I have seen this like, uh, like um, sexual trauma, like pelvic pain, mm-hmm. like all of these things. There's a lot of oils, especially the floral oils, but even things like cinnamon, like when you look up emotional components and it was this way for me, I could not stand Jasmine. Mm-hmm. And I went through years of pelvic pain. That's actually what brought me into pelvic floor PT. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time that I smelled Jasmine and I was just like, Oh, like this mm-hmm. is awful. Like, why could anybody, why would anybody want to use this oil? And mm-hmm. I looked it up and I was just blown away. It's the oil of sexual purity and balance. And it was talking uh, about like releasing sexual suppression or resistance, or mm-hmm. if you had any traumatic experiences that uh, maybe distorted your relationship with sexuality. Right. And I was just like, well, that's so mm-hmm. crazy. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's, I, that's one of the things. So I try to do, um, I like know extremely little about, uh, essential oils. And so I know like, it's funny because I have like, uh, how you were saying you started with like two essential oils. I have like five. And so, and then I was gifted like a few from friends and, um, I just like, and those are my oils. And so it's been fun to get to learn more about them. And, um, it is interesting. Like when I go to like my co-op store and I just like to go through and smell them. And there'll be ones where I'm like, Oh, like I like earthy smells, like really like things where it's like, my boyfriend says, it's like, you're chewing on dirt. That's the way he'll describe it. Like, I love that. And he's like, Oh, it smells like earthworms. And I'm just like, Oh, I love it. You know? And so, um, it's so funny to me how like those different things just for people just kind of ebb and flow. And I, I love hearing, I never thought that there could be, you know, an emotional component or, or I never thought to use oils as a way to support myself. Like with public speaking, I do get really nervous, even though I love speaking, but when I get up by a podium or something, it's very nerve wracking. So do you still treat patients like one-on-one or do you do like online consulting or in the health and wellness realm? 
online consulting. So I mm-hmm. don't treat patients for PT mm-hmm. right now. I'll refer out. I'll do mm-hmm. virtual health coaching cool. and provide education about pelvic floor and things that they can yeah. do at home and that. And then if it's like you need to see a pelvic floor PT, we'll fight. We'll help them find somebody mm-hmm. in their area to get a proper eval and treat and work on that. But yeah, most of what I do is all virtual. I see just a small amount of private virtual health coaching clients, but the majority of my work is with Mm -hmm. the essential oil education. And and I was going to share this one thing, if that's okay, Laura, like as you're talking, you're like, I love the tree oils. I love like the grounding oil. Yes, You can look at the plant and it'll kind of give you hints of like how that's going to work in the body. So the grounding oils and the trees, they're very grounding. They're really good for like anxious feelings or to kind of bring some balance or things. All of the floral oils, like when you look at the plant, they look like vulvas and they're really great yeah. for female health, women's health, hormonal health, yeah. um, supporting mm-hmm. with that, like vetiver looks, if you look at the plant, it, it almost looks like dendrites mm-hmm. of the brain and it really helps with focus and attention and things. So it's, cool. it's fun to kind of like, look at what the plant looks like and then see like how it interacts in the body. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Well, it does make sense that I like things that are rooted and grounding because I do tend to be, I always say I run a little bit anxious. Like some people are like, oh, I run a little bit hot. I always say I run a little, little bit on the anxious side, which might be a slight understatement, but that's okay. <laughs> so do you do, so um, with your education, do you do like workshops and stuff? Is that something that like, yeah, we I do take a workshop from you. Workshops. <laughs> yeah, you can take a mm-hmm. workshop. We do we do a lot of different things. So I will teach a health and wellness class. It's open to all. So I have a Facebook group, Learning with Dr. Laura. It's free. Anyone can join. And I teach a, a class on a different topic each month. So like this month, cool. we talked about photosensitivity with oils because it's summertime and especially the citrus oils you don't want to put on topically and then go out in the sun because it Mm. can make you a little bit more likely to burn. So we talked about safety Mm. with using the oils Mm -hmm. with that. And then I teach a lot of just back to basics intro classes. Mm -hmm. These are the simple ways to use essential oils. I'm actually teaching tons of those this month. They're all free. They're on Zoom and I'll do a post on the Facebook page if anybody wants to jump on and learn a a little bit more but we have a lot of stuff going on. We're doing a mental health and wellness study Mm -hmm. and that's next week Mm -hmm. where people can come in and they can get the samples so they can try an oil for five days and we do education on that. So they kind of take a little, a little Google form survey before Mm -hmm. to see how they're feeling like anxious or stressed or overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. especially with all that's going on. And then they start to incorporate the essential oils and we use them daily and we have like fun giveaways and short little videos of education. Oh. And then they can reassess after five days and see, Oh, how am I feeling afterwards? Yeah. Um, so we're doing that for mental health. And then the last week of June, we're doing one on digestive health Cool. with the oils and things. So yeah, lots that's of fun really... ways for people to come and learn. Yeah. That's really awesome. That tied into, okay, wait, I had another question on here. Oh, and it popped up. Okay. Oh, yes. Here it is. What is the proper procedure or best practice for picking a quality oil? Mm. Oh, this is a complicated question, but we will. We will and I know you it, had a so. YouTube video on it, um, or I you did. had mentioned that. Um, and we still had a question come in. And I just thought it would be because I know I have always gone to my co op because I thought like a co op, like the co op's nice. Yeah. And the co op's good. So it should be okay. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> and full disclosure, I sell doTERRA some oil. So just everybody keep that in the back of their mind too. With yes. that. But the unfortunate part of the essential oil world is about 98% of the oils on the market are adulterated. And there is no governing agency that regulates quality and purity of an essential oil, which means that anybody can slap mm-hmm. a label on that bottle of oil that can say whatever the heck that they want 100% pure 100% organic whatever now the gold standard is is it safe for internal use is it pure for internal use because you'll see labels Mm -hmm. usda organic organic blah 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 this is kind of a buzzword in the essential oil world Mm -hmm. because again nobody's like checking that so it's Mm -hmm. unfortunately left on the consumer to do their own research and due diligence with that but this is why like oils from 
the health food store or the mall or Amazon or wherever, you'll read that and it'll say for aromatic use only, do not take internally. And I've even seen warning signs. If ingested, yes. call poison control, da, 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 da. Yeah. So if it's something that you would recognize as food, like wild orange or lemon or peppermint and lavender, put that away, like put it down and just walk away because that's a fake oil. Mm -hmm. That's a, I wouldn't even call it an essential oil. I would call it a synthetic fragrance. And so that's one of the telltale mm -hmm. signs. If you pick up a bottle of oil and you don't see the scientific term, terminology on there, mm -hmm. put it away. If you mm -hmm. pick it up and you don't see an expiration date, mm -hmm. put it away. Um, if you don't see a supplement fact, letting you know that that is safe for internal mm -hmm. use that's a red flag and we and smell it like mm -hmm. I if I go to the store and I take a bottle of doTERRA oil and then like a oil from Whole Foods or wherever mm -hmm. you don't know what you don't know but if you do a side-by-side -side smell comparison one like doTERRA's oils do smell very pure and then the other's going to smell a little bit synthetic mm. if you're picking up a bottle of essential oil and you smell it and it smells the same every single time that was made in a lab that wasn't mm -hmm. created by plants because plants are going to smell a little, just like our DNA, just like us yeah. as people are all a little different. You should smell differences. Like my bottle of frankincense mm -hmm. is going to smell a little bit different than the bottle of frankincense that I had before. Mm -hmm. The big difference with doTERRA is co-impact sourcing. Mm -hmm. So the plants come from the areas of the world where they're designed to thrive. So lavender mm -hmm. comes from Bulgaria and France. Lemon comes from Italy, tea tree comes from Kenya, like, and we know that like farmers know this, people who love plants know this, that everything from the soil to the humidity, to the temperature, to the time of day mm -hmm. that these plants are grown or even harvested affects the chemical constituents right. in that. And we want to have an on point chemical constituent so that it's going to react and have a good um, therapeutic grade within the body. Right. So that's what we're really talking about here is a therapeutic or medicinal response that is consistent and right. it's potent that you're getting the same results over time versus, especially with some of the cheaper oils or the stuff that you know is adulterated. Right. You're going to have to use a ton of drops to like get the same effect as like one drop of something like this. Like, especially when I'm talking about like putting them on children Right. Or even having this discussion of if it's not safe for internal use, like lavender, peppermint, something like that. Mm -hmm. Do I really want to put it on my skin to be right. absorbed into my bloodstream or inhale right. into my brain? So these are important things to look at. Do your due diligence. Where are they sourcing that oil? What type of testing are they doing? doTERRA mm -hmm. does third-party lab tests. So you can go to a website called source mm -hmm. Each bottle of oil has a code on the bottom. Oh, you nice. can type in that code and it'll pull the third party lab results mm -hmm. for your batch of oil. That's so nice. you can see where it came from, what it was tested. There's no pesticides, heavy metals with that. And I think and that really, I that really plays into, you know, like you were saying for like people like insomniacs, you know, we're so concerned these days, or some people are about removing sugar from our diets or, you know, finding the hidden sugars and things or, um, um, some, I follow some, uh, people who like redesign homes and their paint that doesn't have like this stuff in it, carpet that doesn't have this stuff in it, getting kids toys that are like wooden and doesn't release chemicals. So it makes sense to me when we're thinking about all of this other stuff, especially things like a sense essential oils that we need to also consider where they're farmed, if they have pesticides on them, if they, you know, I mean, Cheerios, I think I heard a statistic has so many pesticides on it. The wheat that is used to make Cheerios has so much pesticides on it after it is processed as a Cheerio that like in France, it's not even sold because it's so high, but here in America, it is sold. So it totally makes sense to me all that you're saying. And I just think, we trust that like, oh, it just, you know, it must be okay. And really what I'm hearing is we, we need to be um, more mindful and maybe it's better to have less, fewer oils that are more highly potent. 
Cause you, yeah. you recommended like similar oil. Like you mentioned, there were several times where I was like, well, she mentioned the same oil and it was something she utilized in the morning and something she utilized later in the day. So it's not like you have to go out and buy a ton. A ton. You can mm-hmm. get away with a few. Yeah, absolutely. And I, like you want to be looking, are they doing research on their oils? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, are they partnering? And it's so interesting. doTERRA has this relationship with John Hopkins and Vanderbilt mm-hmm. Hospital, and they're, they're doing more research on the essential oils. So, like, again, those are all questions to kind of look for. Absolutely. You, if you're going to make an investment, like diffusers, you can to get diffusers in a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Is buy high quality essential oils mm-hmm. because the problem is, like, you were talking about the synthetics. And now that's so hard. And if we're getting a, I wouldn't call it essential oil, a synthetic fragrance, Mm -hmm. so that's designed, it's even going to say on the bottle for aromatic use. So that's more of a frou-frou perfume oil, but it's a synthetic fragrance and it could actually be doing more harm than good. That could be causing headaches instead of helping with them. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's really important to, and you don't need a ton. Right. There are, there are kind of my top 10 that I Mm -hmm. feel like is good. Um, to have some tools on hand and just that way you're kind of ready for anything, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. And and I tell people like, when you get started with somebody, you get me, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like, yeah, you can text me, you can ask me questions. That person at the health food store, Amazon, they're not going to be able to, to serve, to help with that. So, okay. This brings me to something that I'm like, even embarrassed to say, no, I'm cleaning loving it. your cleaning there. your <laughs> cleaning your diffuser. Yeah. How often? How bad can it look? I saw you put in your <laughs> diffuser. I saw inside your diffuser. Your diffuser is beautiful. It is nice looking on the inside. <laughs> I opened my diffuser that I don't use so frequently, and I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I was like, oh my god, where's the vinegar? <laughs> Please know that, so there's the PC answer, right? And then there's like what I actually do in my home. So it's still early in the month, right? So I recommend, in the perfect world, you clean your diffusers once a week. Okay. What I do is once a month. Okay. Let's be real. Uh, once a month with that. You know, I will say, this is interesting. Uh, I, the diffusers, because I have both. I have diffusers from Amazon. I have some from a company called Stadler that I really like. And I have doTERRA diffusers. And for whatever reason, I don't even know why, the doTERRA diffusers don't gunk up Mm. as frequently as some Mm -hmm. of my other ones. So that was one that just looked pretty, but it, yes, I don't know why that is, but yeah, half white vinegar, half water, a couple drops of lemon essential oil, because lemon's like your natural goo gone. Yeah, I will run that in my diffuser for 10 minutes to clean it from the inside out. Some people cannot stand the smell of vinegar. Mm -hmm. And then if you can't stand it, just soak it and then dump it out, wipe it out. If Mm -hmm. there's any residue, you can use your lemon essential oil. Lemon is magical to get rid of all the, it's natural goo gone stickers, sticky stuff. Mm -hmm. And people say, you're telling me to clean my essential oils with an essential oil. And I'm like, yes, "Yes, I am. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, I am. Okay, so, so month, and it was and I do mine at the beginning of the month because it just reminds me. It's like the right. first Sunday of the month. I'm like, oh, let's clean all the things. So it's still early, girl. Like okay. if we would have done this later in the month, I think you would feel better. Okay, because I like I I do remember and um, but like sometimes and I like um. So I have a diffuser where it's from um Amazon, and I like that it goes until the water's out. And those are my favorite ones because they never gunk up because I just like keep running them (laughs) and it just goes until it's done and then it's fine. But this other one only goes to six hours. And so it's not empty by six hours. And I'm like, yeah. Another funny diffuser story I have is I one time was diffusing a diffuser in every single room of my two bedroom townhome and my boy, it was middle of winter. My boyfriend came home and he was like, it looks like smoke is going out. So he came in and he was like, are you cooking something? And I was like, no. And he's like, 
is something on fire? And he's like, it doesn't smell like fire. And I'm like, no. And he's like, what is going on? And I'm like, I'm diffusing. And he's like, honey, it's like humid in here. And like, what is going on? It looks like you started a fire. And so, cause I had like every diffuser on high. I had it in every bathroom, every room. It was like a little intense. It was a little, <laughs> overkill. but I was like, I will not have stress. <laughs> Oh yeah. Was... I love it. Heart that's hardcore. <laughs> yeah. It was like a little it was a little bit too much, but that's okay. So yes, I uh I I had to laugh, but I did like the um I really liked the idea of using the lemon in the water because I will buy lemons with the intention that I'm going to squeeze and put them in my water. And then sometimes I forget that I have them and then they get harder than a rock and I try to microwave them or whatever. And I was like, how much easier would it be to just have an essential oil bottle and I can just do the dropper in there. So what are some of your other favorite ones to add in for like ingestion? Mm. Lemon is a top one. I love wild orange. I love the mm -hmm. taste of wild orange. Honestly, any citrus, grapefruit, <laughs> lime, tangerine. Oh, do you awesome. find that those affect people with um, bladder issues? Because like, you know oh, how they don't. say with dietary bladder irritants to avoid those? I'm wondering if those are processed differently, probably. People do pretty well with that. Like even with like interstitial stay yeah. or something. So What's interesting is the oil comes from the rind, not the right. fruit. Right. So, and there's actually a lot of nutrients. The rind is very nutrient dense. And so you're not having the citric acid like you would mm -hmm. from the pulp or the fruit of the lemon. Right. So a lot of people tend to do really great. Or even like if they have sensitivity, like with their teeth enamel yeah. or things, they do great with the essential oils. Mm -hmm. So we haven't seen that as much That's where nice. if they can't do fresh squeezed citrus, they do okay with the essential oil. Like I'll get questions a lot of, well, I can't take grapefruit with this medication mm. and it's different because the essential oil is coming from the peel, from the rind, wow. not the fruit. Okay. That's so really cool. a little bit different, mm -hmm. which is nice, but I love the citruses and water. They're really high in antioxidants. They're mm -hmm. high in a chemical constituent called limonene. So it's very detoxifying mm -hmm. for the body, for our filter organs, kidney, liver, and it actually helps the body produce glutathione, that body's master antioxidant. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think we could all use a little bit more antioxidants and something to make our water taste yummy so that we're yeah. staying hydrated during the day. But I also love, I do peppermint a lot mm -hmm. in water. I will do cinnamon, like mm -hmm. a drop of cinnamon with wild orange. Mm -hmm. If you like red hot. Cinnamon mm. bark has kind of a red hot. So if you want something kind of sweet or I'll put cinnamon in smoothies. So like I made a green apple yeah. smoothie for breakfast and I put like a drop of cinnamon and a drop of cardamom. Yeah. So I will cook with the oils a lot, mm -hmm. especially to decrease the sugar. Like a mm -hmm. drop of cinnamon makes things taste really yummy. So there's quite a few oils that I do pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. I'll do like a dairy-free, sugar-free peppermint hot chocolate which is wow. really yummy. I'll do a uh, hot chocolate with lavender and cardamom, which wow. is really yummy. So I just kind of like to, yeah, play. that's a good Funny. bedtime drink yeah. for, for the sleep. It's yeah, really good. seriously. So that was one of the things that I thought was really cool was you highlighting the different ways that you can add it to your cooking um, and your drinking, because that's definitely something that I've never thought of as a way to use essential oils um and i just love that is that idea of just sticking in that toothpick and then just kind of going dragging it through now um speaking of the like the grapefruit and the medication piece are there people that need to be a little bit wary because uh, of using essential oils because i know I'm not sure where you are, but like with me, sometimes uh, our physician friends can be like, oh, even though there is research, oh, no, 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 no. Like um, at Mayo, it was funny. They were like, here are five essential oils, and these are the only five essential oils that you may recommend to people. And this essential oil, lavender, can only be given for these three issues and lemon these three issues. And I'm like, yeah, but like, what about like this, this, this? And so then 
of course I'm difficult. So I like Googled stuff and was like, what about this? And what about this? And they're like, Laura, this is what we said. It is only this. Just do what you're told. <laughs> and so, um, That's so very specific. <laughs> yeah, I know. So do you ever find like, one, are there people that should avoid it? And two, if, a, if maybe you're working with someone and they get kickback from a provider, is there a place that you send them to get good information so they can help educate that provider? Sorry, that yeah, was two a very big questions. Question. I'll, help, rem I'll help remember them. So, so first question, are there, are there people that should avoid it? Yes. We should avoid essential oils. So I will say essential oils are very safe. That's like mm -hmm. a, a pure oil. Let me say that. Yeah, we'll say, we'll oil. assume you're doing um, the good kind. Listen the to good your kind, YouTube video. We'll take it. <laughs> safe for internal use. Yeah. Yes. Um, like that's my little PSA disclaimers. Like, please don't just take any oil internally mm -hmm. unless it tells you on the bottle that it is safe to take that internally. Mm -hmm. Cause I always get emails and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not a real oil. Okay. <laughs> so aromatic use everybody do it as much as you want 24 hours that's not going to help it helps to cleanse up your fed air helps with emotional support helps with respiratory support mm -hmm. no safety issues with that topical i would agree as well as long as you're diluting it and you're mm -hmm. using it appropriately and this is where the the education comes in you're not going to put oregano straight on the skin you're not going to like me very much mm -hmm. um like diluting oils appropriately using them appropriately you can use oils topically you can reapply every 15, mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Typically the only time people have an issue with topical use is usually if they didn't use a carrier oil. Mm -hmm. And it may be a little bit of redness on the skin mm -hmm. in that kind of case. Internal use is very controversial, but that's because a lot of essential oils on the market aren't safe to take internally. Right. So we have to make this broad spectrum Statement. thing of like, don't do this. But the reality is there's not a lot of other companies that are doing the research and everything like, right. like what doTERRA is doing with that. So a typical recommended safety guideline is no more than 24 drops mm -hmm. within a 24 hour period of time, adults. Mm -hmm. And I, I consider adults, well, even kids six and up can take mm -hmm. oils internally Okay, with that. So even if I'm hitting it hard, even if I'm feeling like under the weather and I'm doing a bunch of stuff internally, I don't get close to that mm -hmm. 24 hour or 24 drops within a 24 hour period of time, because just one drop is a lot. Just one right. drop is very potent. Right. Like when you're using it in that way. Now, I think there's an exception to every rule. Mm -hmm. And what I will tell people is always listen to your body on your body, like pregnancy. If you were taking essential oils before mm -hmm. pregnancy internally, I would feel comfortable doing that mm -hmm. during now people who have never taken essential oils internally, I don't think pregnancy is a time to just throw something new in right. there, especially things that are going to help with detoxing and stuff like right. that during pregnancy. So, but aromatic topical, great options in that. Um, if we have somebody with a really complicated health history or like a laundry list of medications, there's actually a book it's on Amazon. It's called mad Oilers guide to essential oils and drug interactions. And so you can actually look up some things and kind of use that as a guide as needed. Now with physicians, like how do I actually bring up a conversation with my physician <laughs> about essential oils? One, they're most are not taught or educated right. about essential oils, similar to nutrition, yes. or functional medicine or things like that. So I would say do your due diligence. There's a lot of really great websites. PubMed is one, mm -hmm. Aromatic Science mm -hmm. is another, doTERRA has a science blog, mm -hmm. um, doTERRA is very much a science company, mm -hmm. and so you can pull different research articles, because that's what's going to speak to them, right, right, <laughs> I'm like, here, here's this research article about cinnamon and blood sugar, right, like cinnamon essential, like, what do you think about this, and you may be the gateway person mm -hmm. to introduce them to something with that, and I'm very big on patients being advocates and right. doing their own research and bringing that up. And I would say, if you don't have somebody who's open, like get a second opinion, like right. this is your health and you want to be right. partnering with people. Um, even my functional medicine doctor, I've known him for years. He like just got started with doTERRA oils. Um, <laughs> what was it like two months ago, which was really fun. So, and it, and it really took 
uh, COVID and the season that we're in. Ah. And he started pulling research about things that were really um, antiviral, antibacterial. Wow. And he was like, did you know that? And I'm like, you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And he's like, okay, fine. I need these things. <laughs> and, and they're diffusing them in the clinic. Yes. Uh, to help. So it's, it's funny what the gateway is for people, but right. I've noticed in the season that we're in and how everything's shifting that people that were very resistant are now becoming open yes. to natural things. Yeah. I, um, I, yeah, I completely agree with what you're saying. And I think it's, I think people are constantly reaching for tools now. And I think as we see, I'm very interested to see as healthcare costs, um, out of pocket healthcare costs go up. Um, and like, you know, typical doctor visits, PT visits, things like that are not covered. I think people are going to start reaching for more of these, things that maybe typically were called alternative medicines and like, Oh, this is fringe. And I think it's going to become more mainstream um, because we're looking for that, um, you know, that kind of care across the spectrum and how can we live healthy? Like you were saying from morning all the way to bedtime. And then how can we sleep well? Because those are the things that are going to help our overall health every single day to, you know, have good quality of life. So I'm really excited for this and I'm really happy that you could come on and talk about it because It's just been, for me, kind of such a smack in the face to be like, hey, Laura, you really, these essential oils that you have, like, like you said, you just gave me literally the things that I need to look at for the essential oil. And in my head, I'm like, okay, when we're done, I'm going to go look at my essential oils. And I can already tell you, I know that's not on there. I know for sure that stuff's not on there. And so I have one doTERRA that was given that was gifted to me. And I know that's on there. And I remember looking at it and being like, this is so weird. Why is this like that? And uh, my friend Annie is the one who gave it to me. And I was just like, oh, Annie, you're so weird. And you're so into (laughs) nature stuff. And so, um, yeah, so it's very, it's fascinating to me um, that, you know, I, I think I'm so well versed, but there's so much more to learn out there. So, um, you're super active on Instagram. You have, I checked out your YouTube. It's super amazing. Lots of incredible stuff. You've got a Facebook group, um, and all of that. Are there also your website? I was on your website too. So is that predominantly where people find you? Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, website? Um, Website. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've got a business page there and yeah, that's where people can find me and connect in. And, and I will say, I don't think essential oils are a magic bullet. It's a tool. It's like a piece of that health and wellness lifestyle that we're working on. And I do believe change is coming. Like now even blue cross blue shield Mm -hmm. is offering some reimbursement. It's specifically doTERRA essential oils, which I find so fascinating. Uh, There's not any other brand listed there. But so people may look up if they have Blue Cross Blue Shield health insurance to see if they can get that as part of their, um, their plan and like change is coming. People are opening up to more natural tools and remedies for health, which is, which is kind of neat. I love, I love hearing that. Thank you so much for sharing and thank you for coming on with me. And I know we're going to hear more from you for sure. And I will be definitely looking at all of your offerings. And it was such a pleasure talking with you today, Laura. Oh, thank you so much. It was so nice to connect with you too, Laura. Your tribe is amazing. And thank you so much. It's been such a fun week. Yes. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.